very first activity on the first day in Cappadocia, Turkey should be sunrise hot air ballooning, just in case it's canceled due to weather, you need to reschedule. But even if it does happen, you're gonna find yourself free for the day before you might even normally have eaten breakfast. The normal follow-up tourist activity in this area is to take one of the different tours referred to by colors, primarily red or green, though I did see some blue tours offered too. These tours cover different combinations of activities in the area from museums, hikes, art exhibits, etc. They are similar with different companies, but not identical, so do read the fine print. My summary is that the red tours are more focused on driving between individual points of interest and adding shopping opportunities, while the green tours are more focused on outdoor activity by visiting viewpoints and undertaking some moderate hiking. Anyone that knows me can tell it was an easy choice to go with the green tour. For example, the first stop of the morning was just on the way out of town at a viewpoint overlooking Gorma and the valleys. The other thing about the green tours is that they have what I consider to be the most unique single activity, visiting one of the underground cities in the area. You can go to either K Makli or Derinkuyu. My understanding is that K Makli is a bit wider than the alternative and the other is deeper, but I wasn't worried about the choice. We visited K Makli and I think it was well worth it for the adventure and getting a better understanding of what staying in one of those cities might have actually been like, but do not go if you get claustrophobic as it would be a literal nightmare. At times, the tunnels connecting the rooms require a good few dozen feet of squatting down and shuffling along, but there's a variety of levels and different rooms to see. My favorite part was stopping in the middle of one of the tunnels to look up and down a really tall ventilation shaft. Uh, oh, and they have big round stone doors like something out of the Flintstones. The next stop was the Ilara Valley, a very popular hiking spot where we started by descending a big staircase down into the valley and then basically just walked along the bottom for maybe a couple miles. Do make sure you understand that you're signing up for a group tour, typically like 10 to 20 people, so there is going to be a lot of waiting for other people built into the time. I don't normally like those, but I felt it was worth it to have a guide and someone to drive me around while I napped after waking up at 3.45 a.m. that morning. It meant I didn't need to rent a car for my time in Cappadocia. The valley walls here were carved by ancient people. It has some cute points of interest, and for some reason all the restaurants are like half extended into the river, which I think is awesome. Uh, our lunch spot had a bunch of paths and sitting areas built out on top of the water. All right, we got out of the main tourist area now. It was very crowded over there, and now we're on the actual path. Uh, it's really pretty family friendly. Um, there were a couple people in our group that stayed up at the top because of how many stairs there were before. Uh, but as hikes go, I mean, if you're able to physically do any kind of hike, I think you can do this. Uh, the main goal seems to be get to the restaurant at the end. That's what I'm hiking for at least. Nearby is the next stop, the Salima Monastery, a particularly impressive set of, I guess you'd say, buildings carved into the side of a mountain. Uh, there's paths up through the area, and you can climb around inside to check out the various areas and viewpoints, the living quarters and kitchens and churches of people a few thousand years ago.
here's maybe a bad idea. Oh, sweet. That's almost the end of the tour, but as a last stop, you do visit a viewpoint over Pigeon Valley. It's right across the street from one of those artist shops slash tourist traps where they show you their workshop and then an extremely expensive store. Uh, if you've taken tours other places in the world, you know what I mean. In this case, they had admittedly very pretty jewelry, but I preferred the view. They were not kidding when they named it Pigeon Valley. Another thing that might not surprise anyone that knows me is that since the green tour ends around 5 p.m., I still felt like I could get more out of the day. So I asked the tour bus to drop me off on the way back at Uchisar Castle. This is actually a stop on the red tour normally, but it's right by Pigeon Valley. I had driven past it a few times now, and I really wanted to check it out as it's very impressive standing up on the hill there. You can kind of meander through the hollowed out rooms of the castle, climb all the way up to the top for one of the best views around. Probably a great place to view the sunset when the weather's good. And then when I was done, it was just a quick taxi ride to get back to Gorma. Overall, this day was pretty much what I expected and allowed me to see a lot of the major sights. I'm glad I did it, but I'm also glad I reserved the next day for something that got me away from all the people. Mountain biking here was amazing, but that is going to be its own video.